no, 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 it's not there. That's, it's not there. There's no line. It's not HIV, oh my God. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Jennifer and I am HIV positive. If you don't already know that, this is a channel about my life living with HIV and it's fine. It's all gonna be fine. Yes, I'm alive. People ask me that question. It's so funny in my comments. Did she die? No, I didn't die. I'm right here. All you have to do is just click the link to the channel. Like, it's not that hard to see that there's 200 videos there. I'm alive. I survived. I'm fine. Two hours later. So, I only do videos when I feel inspired. I just can't do them on the fly unless I feel like there's something I need to talk about. So, um,. Uh, something came up recently that I was like, oh, I need to talk about this on my channel. And just a few things before I forget. Um, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, please do so at vongirl24. And um, I'm there every day, you know, talking about my life or advocacy or um, I don't know what class I'm subbing or, you know, the latest animal in my house, whatever. I'm on there all the time. So if you want to follow me on there, vongirl24, V O N. G-I-R-L 24. If you want to support my advocacy, you should see my kitty. <gasps> Look at this. <laughs> this is the new little kitty in my house. Look at him, he's so cute, oh my God. He was just doing very fast little paws on the glass. Um, if you'd like to support my advocacy, please go to the link in the description or jennifervon.org and um, any or all help is appreciated. I do this all for free. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you feel like moved by what I do, um, it's greatly appreciated. I'm just, you know, chugging along here, trying to do my little part in the world to help people. And gosh darn it, I think I do. So if you'd like to help, I would really, really appreciate it. Okay, so with that out of the way, I just had to talk about this because it was one of those moments where I'm, I'm like, are you kidding me? First of all, I want to say that the majority of the people that contact me are people that are freaking out about HIV. And I've done lots of videos on HIV anxiety and how this truly is uh, an issue. Although, you know, there's just generalized anxiety and there's lots of anxiety towards different things. But there is truly an HIV anxiety because it's based on a virus that could ultimately kill you. So, of course, and there's so much stigma, nobody wants to be... Um, you know, on this side of the fence with that title in their medical history, right? So I get all that. Um, the majority, and I've, I've talked to other advocates about this, the majority of, majority of the people that are freaking out about this are, um, are not the high risk f people. Like when we're talking high risk, if you look statistically at who has HIV, it's gay men, it's bisexual men. That's, that makes up the majority of who has HIV. Um, those are not the people that are contacting me freaking out about HIV the majority of the time. You know, there's some that, that are that just will not test. They're so scared they'd rather um, honestly not test, not know, put their head in the sand and just go on living this horrible life feeling like they have it even if they don't even have symptoms. There's people that will go on and just they're crippled by it and uh, I I, 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 it's something that's beyond my help. I really, cause I just don't even understand that. I think, well, you just could just take a test and know, and then you can move on with your life. Like that's really simple, but they won't, they won't. They're too afraid to take the test. The test is like, I was explaining it to my husband, Eric, that it's like jumping, uh, with a bungee cord like someone telling you if you jump off this bridge with a bungee cord you're gonna be fine it's gonna be fine but it's taking that step and that and and knowing that you're gonna have to kind of be like freaking out for that second that you're bouncing and flying through the air and like people are not willing to step off the ledge they just aren't they'd rather just hold on uh, to their bungee equipment at the top of the ledge and not take that step off because it's too scary knowing, you know, am I going to like survive this jump or is it going to snap and I'm going to die? So that's really the best analogy I can come up with. So I, cause I just, it blows my mind. Like so many people, it's like so easy, just go test and then you can move on with your life. But then again, I get the people who test and 
they're negative and they still don't believe it, you know, and they could go, and I've had people that have said, could it still be hiding there from 10 years ago? No, 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 it's not hiding there from 10 years ago. It's not there. It's not there. Your symptoms are something else. It's not HIV. Symptoms for HIV look like a gazillion other things. It's not HIV. It's not HIV. It's going to be the title of my video. It's not HIV. Oh my God. HIV is not that common. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting worked up. I'm getting warm here. Hold on, I gotta take my sweatshirt off. This is, <laughs> I don't feel like editing this video, so you're just gonna have to deal with that little, uh... So, back when I first started, this is my, my after-school t-shirt, landmark after-school program. Um, back when I first threw out my video, threw out, not threw up, threw out my video, it was, um, August of 2016, so... It's August of 2019 right now. Oh, I just passed my three year. I didn't even realize that. Today's the 19th. Dang, on Friday. That was my three year anniversary of my uh, HIV AIDS story. Wow, that's kind of cool. Dang. Anyway, okay, so three years ago I put out that video. And I'd say within probably three months I had a man contacting me. I mean, I had a lot of people contacting me. But I had this man and this one stood out and I will explain why this one stood out. So I had this man contacting me um, that he he needed to talk to me. He just needed to talk to me. And it was about a friend of his that um, that might have been exposed to HIV and he you know had all these concerns about testing and all this. And um, long story short, what it turned out to be is he was pretending to be this person. Uh, it was really all about him. So he was the one with the anxiety, finally admitted it. And he really wanted to talk to me on the phone. And so I was super overwhelmed at that point. I always am overwhelmed with the amount of messages I get. I don't, I don't even know. I can't get through them all. I do my best. I just, I really do. I have to sift through whatever I can answer. And um, anyways, this was the very beginning of like that new mentality that I was going to have to deal with all these messages. Like I, this was so new to me having this bombardment of people contacting me. So somehow I'm now an expert um, and I've got this man call, contacting me and he wants to talk to me on the phone. Um, and he said, I will pay you. I will send you money so that I can talk to you on the phone about this. Like I'm, it's ruining my life. And so, um, we, we speak on the phone. He sends me a little bit of money to help out with my time. And I think we speak a couple times. He he clearly has some money and I will tell you why I know that in a second. He's in New York and basically this is all based on a needle prick um, incident and in a medical setting and he doesn't know the status of the person who who had had this needle in them for I don't know if they had like an injection of medication I'm not sure what it was. But anyways, um, he had done PEP after which is Truvada. So Truvada is what people take to prevent getting HIV from people if they want to have condomless sex. Um, they can also take it within 72 hours after an exposure if they think they've been exposed to it. So he had taken that, but he'd had this cough that was like lingering, lingering, lingering. And he was married and he thought he had HIV. He had two kids and he had been living in another room in his house. He didn't even, I don't think he told his wife. He did not told his wife. Anyways, it came down to him wanting me to literally fly to New York and be with him in person while he had this test taken. And the reason this is such a trip is because this person calling me was, is a doctor and, um, and not an HIV doctor, but he is a doctor. He's a general doctor. And I looked him up and I found his picture and I found where he worked and all of that. I knew for sure that he was legit. Um, really nice. I mean, like I said, I've talked to him on the phone. He, He's scared to death that this is going to turn up positive. Um, his tests were all coming up negative. Uh, oh, no, no, no. He hadn't tested yet. That was it. This was all leading up to it, this cough. And I was like, I, for, I can't remember why exactly, but I had huge doubts that it was going to turn out positive. And now I know a lot more about um, finger, or not finger pricks. Did I say finger pricks? Needle pricks. Um, that in a medical setting... From what I've heard, that this this is never trans trans transulted. <laughs> this has never resulted in a transmission. Um, from what I've heard through the community, obviously people who share needles for drugs and pick a dirty needle up off the ground to inject drugs, yes, you can get HIV HIV like that. But in a medical setting, I have not heard that this has happened. 
I, I could be wrong, but this is, I mean, I got it off Twitter. I'm a very well-known advocate. Um, you know, I don't know. I could be wrong. So maybe there are a few cases, but it's not common. Um, so I felt pretty good that, you know, he didn't have it, even though he hadn't tested yet. So his whole thing was he wanted me to come down to New York and he wanted me that I just slurred. He wanted me to come out to New York and basically hold his hand while he took this test. It all seemed a little weird, although I didn't think he was trying to be creepy or anything. He even said I could bring my kids and he'd pay for the flights and the hotel and all this. And I was like, well, if I'm going to New York, I want to see Eric. And like, like this is all getting kind of like weird. Like, I don't, I don't know. So anyways, it never happened. Um, but I did end up talking to him on the phone like another couple times and he paid for my time to talk to him. And, um, you know, it's just more, more, more or less just reassuring him how good I felt and how normal I feel. And I, you know, it's like, I, I don't feel sick. I feel fine. I just take a pill a day. Like I just really reassuring a doctor. Like this was kind of insane to me. This was the beginning of my advocacy. And I'm like, I can't believe like I'm sitting here talking to a doctor and having to like tell him, like I'm having to keep him like, what is that term? Um, talk him off the bridge, like literally. So, um, I, he's had some contact with me through the last three years and he did finally test. Um, and it was probably six months after the fact, maybe even longer. And it was negative and I wasn't surprised, but he, like I said, he had had this cough that this dry cough. And I'm like, well, you probably have like bronchitis, you know, <laughs> I don't know, you know, and it, that's probably what it was. And so, um, the other day and now we're going on three years and my kids are showing up behind me. Um, I get an email from him, three separate emails, three different pictures of three different times taken of an HIV test. He took a test and he's panicked. This is three years later, three years later. He took a test and he sent me a picture of like, this is the test 10 minutes later. This is a test 20 minutes later. This is a test 40 minutes later, three separate emails. Do you see a line, Jennifer? I'm beyond panicked right now. I can't even see straight. I, I am like crippled with worry. I'm like blown away, blown away. This has not, he has not been able to let this go after three years. My kids are walking up and they're gonna, there's Ryan, there's Owen. <laughs> Hi, I'm doing a video. Owen hurt his toe. <laughs> Hi, I'm doing a video. Oh, don't let the dog out. <laughs> so anyways, I felt like this was really, my face looks really red. It's really warm in my car. Oh, thank you. Now Finn's in my car. Okay. Can you shut this? Oh, we got stuck in so much traffic. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, oh boy. We've got a dog in here. Okay. So I just felt like I needed to, uh, like it made me sad that I have to say that was my first reaction. Cause I said to him, I said, this actually breaks my heart because if a doctor can't get beyond the fear of this virus and knowing that he keeps getting negative tests and can't move on, how the hell is a normal person who has this kind of anxiety supposed to move forward? If a doctor who should, and I've had to actually say to him, you should know better. Come on. Like I've actually had like a tough love. Well, I've written back to him, but it's been with some tough love. It really has. Cause I can't believe that he still won't let this go three years. He, and he, he wrote, he goes, I'm, I'm beside myself right now with these tests. Do you see a line? I'm like, he goes, I swear I see a faint line. I'm like, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's no line. So this is not to shame him. I don't know if he'll even watch this. I'm not sure if he even watches my videos, but it really was this realization that if even a medical professional can't get beyond this, this fear and this anxiety, like I, I what, what, not to like throw this out there, but like what hope is there for people who are going through this, who aren't, who should, who wouldn't have this medical knowledge? Like that's this, it's even harder for them. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I don't even know how to end this video. Cause I feel like this is so like, like not uplifting, but I guess again, it's just to like, let those know who are suffering from anxiety to know that, um, you're not alone. Even doctors are suffering from anxiety. Um, but again, all you can do is test. And I don't know, like, I just want to bang 
my head on my steering wheel. He's been testing negative and he still won't let it go. And I do get those a lot. Uh, you know, these people that test negative and they're like, I think it's probably just not showing up yet. No, 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 it's not there. That's, it's not there. That's why it's not showing up because it's not there. So, um, okay. <laughs> How do we want to end this, Finn? We should end this. <laughs> Okay, I got a call from Eric, so um, we're gonna do the outro here in the Food Max parking lot with my phone shadow on my face. So, oh, and really quick, I want you to see this um, message that just came through. Look at this. Again. Everyone thinks they are the one. You're not, you're not that special one. I'm sorry, everybody wants to be a special snowflake, but they're not, believe me. Okay, I could, there's nothing I can do about this, bad. Okay, Owen, what should the people do? They should like, comment, and subscribe to Jennifer Vaughn and follow owen.warmerdam on Instagram. I don't know if you should follow my kid. And I don't even do know, mean? does anybody even do that? Comment, like, and subscribe? <laughs> I don't even know if that does anything, but do it if you want to. Do it. Follow me, please. Oh, and let's try this one more time. Oh my God. <laughs>